Okay, I am one day late. Cut me some slack. If you follow a lot of gaming channels here on YouTube, which is a safe assumption if you're watching my stuff, there is a very good chance that your YouTube homepage yesterday was flooded with two year Switch anniversary videos. This guy right here, the Nintendo Switch, is now two years old. And a lot has happened in that time. You gotta remember that though now it's a huge success, the Switch came hot off the embarrassing failure of the Wii U. And when it came to consumer trust, Nintendo was at an all-time low, which is why a lot of lifelong Nintendo fanboys, like is my case, were a little hesitant to jump in on the Nintendo Switch hype. And I remember I did a video here when the Switch first came out uh, explaining why I wasn't all that interested in the console, which seemed odd to me because as I've mentioned so many times here on this channel, this idea of a hybrid console, a portable that you can actually dock to something and play on the big screen with your friends and all that, was somewhat of a, a lifelong dream of mine. And it is important to point out that this concept is not entirely original. Sega beat Nintendo to the portable home console hybrid by over two decades with the Sega Nomad and to an extent, Sony also experimented with that with the PSP Go. Thanks to the PSP Go dock and its ability to be paired with a DualShock controller, the PSP Go was sort of like a Switch in that you could play games portably, but you could also play them on your TV. Expect a full video on that, by the way, now that I am the proud owner of a PSP Go dock. Obviously, you know the Nintendo Switch was a huge success. For a while, a few months after its launch, it was hard to actually find it in stock. It took me several months of asking at literally every game store, every Walmart. I would always ask, you guys have Nintendo Switches? And after doing this for like six months, I, asking became somewhat of a tradition because I didn't even expect them to have it in stock anymore. When I finally got mine, I was pretty excited. And there weren't even that many games out that I wanted to play, but the system was already shaping up to be a very interesting concept. So far, the Nintendo Switch has sold over 30 million units. And to put this in perspective, in only two years, it is getting close to the number of total Nintendo 64 units ever sold. In two years! That's pretty impressive! Though for a while, the biggest complaint about the Nintendo Switch is that there were no big AAA exclusives out for it. And there is a lot of truth to that. For a long time, all that you could really play if you already beat Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey was indies. Indie games that you could pick up on Steam for sometimes half the price. A practice that became known as the Switch tax is something that still plagues Switch owners to this day. Thankfully now, on top of excellent indies that, you know, are a little bit overpriced, but it's it's a premium you pay to be able to play these things on the go. I understand that. As someone who loves portability, I definitely understand that. Thankfully, that hasn't been the case anymore. There have been a lot of big AAA exclusives that have come out on the Nintendo Switch. Most recently, Pokemon Let's Go and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Something that also helped to move a lot of Nintendo Switches is the fact that you can play very popular free-to-play games like Fortnite or Paladins on it. And what's even more awesome is that you can pick up these games on the Nintendo Switch and play with your friends that play on other platforms, provided they're not playing on a PS4. Sony hasn't been super hot on the idea of crossplay, and I understand that they are the top dog. Someone like, say, Microsoft has to play ball because they don't have as much to offer. So saying, hey, if you buy our games on Xbox, you can play with your friends on any other system, it's a selling point that Sony just doesn't really need. Two years later though, I am sad to say that Switch Online is still very, very lackluster. And yes, it's very cheap. It is the cheapest online experience on a console out there. I understand that. But they're giving us not even the bare minimum. We still can't message our friends, you still can't create parties to play online. It's, it's, it's barely there. And it's so disappointing. Yes, you get a bunch of NES games that you can play even online with your friends. That is kind of cool, it is neat. I have warmed up to the idea of these NES games that they're giving us as like a peace offering in exchange for how lacking the service is. 
I like that. I would have liked to see something like, say, SNES games. That would have made the deal a little bit better. And data miners have found a list of SNES games that were supposed to be coming out. At a recent Nintendo Direct, everybody was excited thinking that they're going to finally announce SNES games. Still hasn't been the case, but I'm confident they're coming at some point. Some standout titles for me on the Nintendo Switch that I've played a lot over the last year are not even Switch exclusives, but I, like I said, I am a portability guy. I love being able to play on the go wherever I am, and the fact that the Switch allows you to detach the controllers and play two players wherever you are makes it a very unique gaming experience. So like I was saying, some of the games that I played the most last year. There's Dead Cells, a super violent roguelike with procedurally generated levels that I still haven't beat. There's Into the Breach. I played a lot of Into the Breach. This one is basically a roguelike as well, but this is a turn-based strategy game slash puzzle game. There's some debate in the community as to whether it's more strategy or more puzzle. Point is, it's a lot of fun, and though it's not exactly like Advanced Wars, it scratches that itch a little bit, at least for me. It's a phenomenal title that, again, like all the other games I'm mentioning, isn't exclusive to the Switch, this is also available on Steam, but I travel a lot and I like to be able to play wherever I am. Stardew Valley, I sunk so many hours into Stardew Valley. This thing came out on the Switch just before I had my shoulder surgery, as I'm sure you guys remember. I was chilling in my mom's house for quite a while, I couldn't really move my right arm. And the beauty of Stardew Valley, which is something that I imagine a lot of people never really considered, is the fact that it can be played with only one Joy-Con, making it viable to play one-handed, which was the situation I found myself in post-surgery. I put so much time into Stardew Valley, and the funny thing is, I never really cared that much for farming simulation games, but Stardew Valley, there's something about it. An ultimate chicken horse. Now this game is just straight up fun. So much fun, in fact, that I bought this game after buying it on the Switch. I also bought it on my PS4 and on Steam so I could play with my friends on PC and on the PS4. This one is really hard to describe. It's kind of like, imagine competitive Super Mario Maker, if that makes any sense. As I was editing this video, I realized that there's nothing I would enjoy more out of Super Mario Maker 2, another title to look out for in 2019. There's nothing I would want more than for it to be closer to what Ultimate Chicken Horse is. That gameplay, but in Mario, would be ah, amazing. I'm hoping that this little video does the game justice. It's very hard to describe. Basically, you have a bunch of people creating a level as they go along, trying to get from point A to point B. It's hilarious. On my recent trip to Orlando, I played a lot of this with Natalia's family. This game is just so much fun. The Switch could still see a lot of improvements. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the battery life, and it's a little bit bigger than I would have preferred. And yes, we're still not getting all of the AAA titles I would like to see on the system. No doubt due to the fact that this is effective a tablet so obviously I can't expect it to run everything say my PS4 would run and switch online specifically still has a long way to go before I'm fully satisfied with the subscription money that I'm putting into it all that being said these have been two phenomenal years Nintendo really did it again with this thing especially when you consider the fact that people weren't really trusting them to be able to pull this off despite not being entirely original it is a revolutionary idea one that has never been attempted at this scale before and they did it it's funny because we give nintendo a lot of crap for being perhaps too conservative at times but they're the ones really trying the groundbreaking stuff that it looks like the other companies hadn't even considered before but what do you think do you have a nintendo switch do you want to get one are you waiting for a specific game 2019 is going to be amazing i am so so excited for mortal kombat 11 and marvel ultimate alliance 3 i'm a huge marvel ultimate alliance fan i played the hell out of that on my psp and replaying now the graphics didn't age that great, so I want to see a better version on this thing. As always, let me know in the comments what you think, and also let me know where you are watching these videos from. I love to hear that. Follow me on social media if you aren't already, both Twitter and Instagram. I'm very active over there. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. 99 Vitas, my indie game based on my Brazilian gaming podcast of the same name, is now available on the Switch, which is my favorite way to play the game. 99 Vitas, which by the way means 99 lives and 
Portuguese is a 16-bit inspired street brawler in the style of classics like Captain Commando or Streets of Rage. There are tons of unlockable characters, bonus levels, challenging boss fights, there's an online mode. We put a lot of thought and work into 99 Vitas and I think you will find that it shows. I did my own voice acting and everything. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the soundtrack on this thing alone is worth the price of admission in my opinion. Just like every other Switch fan out there, we hate the so-called Switch tax, where indie games land on the eShop with a higher price point than their Steam versions. So 99 Vitas is actually cheaper on the Switch than on Steam right now, only $10. And hey, don't just take my word for it, there's a demo for you to try it free. So go to the eShop right now and download 99 Vitas. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.